Good afternoon. I am ready to get into Isaiah 19. This is the 19th day of looking into the book to the gospel according to Isaiah or the truth. Because I know people say, well, the gospel didn't get here until Jesus came. Well, good news is good news. <clears throat> Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread as we forgive our debtors. As, Lord, as we forgive our debtors. I'm, I'm, I'm messing up. Help us to forgive our debtors. As, forgive us our debtors as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For you are the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I mean every word of that. Kind of got kind of thrown off a little bit. I want to show you something this morning. This is this is a I almost hit myself. This is a empty bottle of frappuccino, and it being something that I enjoy drinking from Starbucks, and in this it tells me. Right here, how many calories are in there? On the back of it, it tells me uh, what's in it. And what's in it, it tells me so that if they are responsible, or they have to be responsible to tell me what it is that I am eating or drinking. And it gives me all of what I need to know why. Because they know they can't sell me something that can harm me without warning me that you need to be careful or you can enjoy. And I'm saying that to say everything that man makes now requires to put the nutritional facts on there. Facts. That's simply saying that when they care enough or they the government has made it so at least we know what we are putting in us. So when we make our choices, it would truly be a choice that you have the opportunity to, to say yes or no to. Which made me think about the word of God. If the food... Uh, critics or the food uh, administrator or the food doctors or, or people that make sure we're eating right, they warn us. And that's giving us the power to make our own decisions. This little jar said, you don't have to drink me. I do come with a warning. I do come with information. So every time I drink one of these, it's telling me the same thing. So I can't sue the company. I can't say they didn't tell me. I, you know, I got the right to know what it is I'm putting in my body. We don't do that. We do that with water. This bottle of water says the same thing. It tells me what's in it. This gum, it tells me what's in it. All of these things tells me what's in the in what I'm putting in my body. Whether it's mocha, whether it's water, it comes with a warning, it comes with a label. Because the food uh, checker folks, the health department says, you got to tell these people what they're drinking. So I want to know why is it that we don't know what we're drinking and eating. Every time I put anything in my mouth, it has a label on it. And this is what God is saying to us. If you can eat and drink, and they have to put it on here, why is it that we too lazy to know what I said when, it, when, when we make our decisions? He said, I come with a label too. And I thought about that this morning. I said, um, and what I'm about to read today, all right, we're going to be talking about Egypt. And what's going on in Egypt? God said, I used Egypt. I'm going to tell Egypt what I like and what I don't like. 
I'm not getting ready to go to Clarksdale, Mississippi, because Clarksdale can see what I would take in Egypt and say what I don't like. If you do what Egypt does, then I'm talking to you. I use Egypt as an example of what I would do to any area or anybody. So when you learn how I'm speaking to Egypt, please know that if they're doing something that I had to correct, I would correct it the same way because I'm a judge, I'm God. I can't afford to just tell, I got the whole world that I'm looking at. And I don't have to say to Egypt the same thing I say to Atlanta because I'm talking to the same behaviors. So if Egypt is being punished based on something they did and if Atlanta does it or Africa does it or Alabama does it or anybody, Florida does it, the United Kingdom does it. He said, what I say to one, I say to all. This can be bought anywhere. They sell it. It's not prejudice. He said, I can, if I said it, if I put it in writing, it's for anybody to use their power or decision mechanism to say, I'm going to follow his instruction or I'm not. So let's see what happened in Egypt and then I'll examine myself to see whether or not if it's in Egypt that I know that he's talking to me too. He ain't talking to me. Yes, he is. I'm a classroom teacher. Or was for 30 some, over 30 years. I made my rules. I didn't have time to go over every rule to every kid that came in late, didn't come in, or whenever they showed up. My rules are set, and they were the rules for everybody, no matter when you came in. These are the rules I run by. These rules will bless you. These, were, these rules won't bless you. They, they will curse you. It doesn't matter. And when I examine what they did, what God said through Isaiah, this is a prophecy saying I did Egypt. Egypt didn't follow my instructions. Egypt saw my wrath. In some kind of way, somebody in the pulpit is not warning us. And we don't know nothing about God's word when it comes down to consequences other than the fact that we get them and don't know how we got them, which is insane. If you are doing what Egypt did, you're going to get what Egypt got. And it could be something good. It's, I mean, it is informative. It's labeled and it's signed by God. He said, the burden of Egypt, this is Isaiah speaking. He said, behold, the Lord rides upon a swift cloud. And we read before how God said, I ride on a cloud. I'm above. And shall come into Egypt. And he came in and Egypt did not invite him. He said, the land is mine. I am the land of Lord. I'm coming. I don't like what I saw in Egypt. This is my land. I can come in anytime I want to. Invite it. You don't have to. I ask you to let me in. You wouldn't. So I'm visiting what I own. The burden of Egypt, behold, the Lord rises on a swift cloud, comma, and shall come into Egypt. I'm going to come there. This is the prophecy. This is it. This is Isaiah speaking. And and the good thing about a prophecy is that it, it may not be going on at the time. And so if you know I'm coming, what do you need to be doing in the in between time? And this was written over 3,000 years ago. And the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. He said, when I show up, your idols are falling down. Everything that's not like me, I don't like, is going to crumble. Just like Dagon, when they brought the Ark of the Covenant and then the thing fell. And then they erected it back up and it fell again. And God said, try me. I'm coming into the land of Egypt. And you got idols in there and you got a whole lot of them. When I showed up and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. If God was to come to my area right now, all of these idols got more sense than the human beings that worship them. Said, I'm going down. I'm, I know I'm going down because the presence of the Lord is here. 
All of the things that, that we erected and put in the place of God to worship and to minister to and it ministers to us and is not lined up with the word of God. That thing has sense enough to say God is in the house. And man is looking at the thing that's on the ground and saying, how the hell? That thing got more sense. Birds and dogs and and, and donkeys and, and, and bees and grasshoppers. It's a God in the house, God in, God in the land. But the smartest, supposedly, human being to make a decision to do right or wrong, some, something is not quite right. When a thing will obey God and the person that made the thing don't understand, you the one God wants to be obedient. He wants you to be obedient to him. And the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. He said, when I show up and things start rattling and falling down, you better know I'm in the house. And the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. He said, all the people that got all them idols going to run out of, they going to do, What if God comes in the presence of our day and just, he just, everything that's not lined up with his word on the internet just go flat. all the worshiping things that we do online. What if it just stopped working? All of a sudden, it stopped working, but the people that's teaching the word is the only thing that you can hear. Would you, would you change? The word said, and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. He said, when I show up and all your gods fall down, you're going to get scared. <laughs> We're talking about Egypt. Wherever you are, it's talking about us. And this is what he said I'm going to do. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. Now I'm moving all your idols. That's your God. I'm not your God. But that's my land. And when I move your gods and things you worship and things that you love, he said then, just imagine that everything stopped, stopped working. He said, now I'm going to set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, colon, and they shall fight everyone against his brother. He said, I'm going to watch you do it. Guaranteed. He said, I'm not, I'm not nervous. I'm telling you, that's what I'm going to do. Why am I doing this? Because my whole plan for man was for man to work together in unity. But you told me you don't need my plan. Well, give me back my safety. The whole plan of God is like, if you own a business, you can understand God easily, easily. You want your employers to work together and get along and serve and, 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 and treat people right. God says, you're my business. But my company won't listen to the owner. And he said, this is what I do when I don't like what I see in my employee." Yes. And I will set the Egyptian against the Egyptian, and they shall fight everyone against his brother. We got brother fighting brother, and everyone against his neighbor. People that I don't know fight each other. City against city, and kingdom against kingdom. He said, You'll destroy yourself. He said, When I'm not in the place, there was a botanist who put if I'm not in the place, this is what I have. An example. He had two. He had two uh, um, cages with two rats in this side and two rats in this side. This rat over here had something to do with the water in here. This rat right here, these two rats over here didn't have nothing to do. You know what they did? They fought and fought. These two right here, they were so tired of playing and jumping around, spinning wheel and playing with the ball. They just fell asleep, but they were busy. These right here didn't have anything to do. They killed each other. They just fought all day long. We don't have anything to do. That's what we'll do. If you sit around the house all day long, you have nothing to do, you'll destroy yourself. And God has said, I'm, I'm removing my plan away from you. You don't want it, then I'm going to let you just see what life is like to live like an animal. And that's what you're going to act like. I have protection for people. Animals wrong, wild, wild animals anyway. He said, you're going to fight from the smallest all the way to the greatest, which is the kingdom. Won't nothing be not 
going at each other. Why? Because he told me you don't need me. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof. He said, then your heart is going to melt. Because you're going to say things are out of control. And then he said, and I will destroy the counsel thereof. There will be nobody online giving you anything that makes sense. And in other words, it won't be any more labels on the back of your stuff. Just drink it. Whatever it is, you don't need counsel. You don't need wisdom. You don't need God. You're not listening to nobody. And they shall seek to the idols. He said, you're going right back to where I told you what you couldn't have that got you in trouble anyway. And to the charmers, people that do talk to an a, a, a animal or a snake. And to them that have familiar spirits, and they're going to try to go to the graveyard and dig up the dead or talk to the dead. And to the wizards, and all of them charge money. He said, this book right here, this wisdom, I give to you. This is what Jesus said. I gave my life for you. This book. The instructions in this book. Jesus said that I came to point you back to my father. Notice that Jesus did not give all the details of what he did. Why? Because it wasn't necessary. He said, come just go back and talk to the father. And then you will understand the details of what I'm doing. I'm not trying to make you believe the Father. I believe the Father. I am a believer of my Father. I'm not trying to make you do it. I know you must believe him if you want to live. I don't have to go back and prove to you that he, I, I mean, let me turn to this script and turn to this script and turn to this script. I believe Jesus said, I said what I said. And when I said one time, I said it for everybody at all times. And I can save anybody. After I saw in, in Isaiah... Um, well, no, this, this chapter, we're going to see that. He said, you're going to run back. You're going to be so scared until you're going to create these crazy images that you uh, worship. And, and let's, let's go back. When he said the charmers, could it be that these folk are dressed up in robes on Sunday and they're charming? And they got on red bottom shoes? Or do we just have this idea? Anybody that gives you anything and call it God, and it's not the word, you are under witchcraft. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's denomination. I don't care if it's religion. If it's not God, it has you captivated in your thought process, you are under witchcraft. The only way you can know that you're not being led by a witch is you got to get the word. You got to go see for yourself. God said, check out everything that people say before you drink it. Don't drink this without reading the label. Don't let nobody put anything in your ears and you don't know for yourself that it's in the word. You are not supposed to go sit up in a pool, sit up in a, on a bed and listen to somebody stand above you and let them dump all that stuff in you without you saying it's confirmed. Confirmed means I ate it first. I know you tell the truth. I'm not talking about picking out this word. You can pick anything you like and what you don't like. You'll never talk about it. You would never have I heard in 62 years a preacher talk about the preachers. They said that, that ain't got nothing to do with you. That's for preachers and that's private conversation. You're a lie. It's God's word. It's open to everybody. And when it talks about the, the people and it talk about the leaders, why did you just talk about the people? And you never say what the leaders ought to do. He said, and then I'm going to give the Egyptians, will I give over to the hand of a cruel Lord? I'm not going to give you good pastors, good leaders, good administrators, good presidents. I'm going to give you somebody that got no sense. You don't want me, I would not give you a David. I would not give you a, a, a Joseph. I would not give you a Daniel. I guess I, I'm going give, give you that. If you're a man that don't want to live right, I will not give you a good wife. I'll give you a headache. If you're a woman that, that, that tell me I'm living, I want me a good husband, I will not. Let him me when I said the Lord. I will not give that to you. i give you somebody to beat you inside your head. I give you a woman that'll say what you want to hear and be sleeping with somebody else at the same time. And now women loving women all on the Essence magazine. Women that ain't got to wait on no man now. 
God said, I'm not going to give anything holy to something that's not holy. He said, I don't arrange dates like that. I don't match make like that. I hook people up that, that I hide you from a good woman and a good man. And so he said, and the Egyptian will I give over to the hand of a cruel Lord and a fierce king shall rule over them, says the Lord of, the Lord of hosts. The Lord that says, I hung the stars and know every name of them. Know when one is working, when one is not. I know what time the sun goes up and I know what time it's coming down. I'm the Lord of everything. I know how many grasshoppers I got to sit in the book of Revelation. He said, I'm going to bite the people I love. He said, I'm going to bite you for five months. He said, you're going to hurt. You're going to be in labor and you're going to hurt. The doctor going to be hurt. You're going to be hurt. We, this, the word of God says this. He said, when there's darkness over the land, over the entire land, not in the section, if the whole earth is suffering under a virus right now, he said, that's me. He said, don't say conspiracy. Don't say conspiracy or confederate. Ain't nobody behind that. He said, when there is darkness over the earth, you said, well, that's not darkness. He said, I, okay, he, darkness is when the mind can't figure out what's going on. He said, seek me. I'll tell you what's going on. We don't know that because we don't study his word in a way where we get those details. He said, I'm behind it. This is my land. Wake up. Wake up. But it's getting better. Okay, let's keep reading. If we have not changed and we can continue in sin, there's no need to read this book. It's, if we can continue in sin and think that there are no consequences for sin, don't read. It is what it is. That's what you said. He said, the Egyptians I will give into the hand of a cruel lord and a fierce king, a, me, a ruler that don't care nothing about life or the people that live in. Same thing. Says the Lord of the Lord of hosts. And he said, let me show you what I'm going to do. Says I'm the Lord of hosts. And the waters shall fail from the sea. One. And the river shall be wasted and dried up. Now, 70% of the earth is made out of water. And the water shall fail from the sea. Now, I need to go back and see how the sea does us when it comes down to the land. And the river flows into the sea. And the sea gives the river water. I think that's how it works. And the river runs and makes sure all the things that it passes, it path goes along its path. Is water good? And they shall turn the rivers far away. He said, when the rivers dry up, everything in the river is going to dry up and everything in the river is going to stink. Because the things in the river are going to die and you're going to be able to you know, suffocate, basically, going toward that area. And they said, turn the rivers far away. You get to the river, I can't go there. Dead stuff. The brooks of deep fish shall be emptied and dried up the places where you can go get, let me read that in the sixth, in another translation, so we can see. The channels will stink, they will dwindle, and each of the canals will be parched. Reeds and rush will wilt. Everything around the brook is going to dry up. All, all the things that let us know life is in this area, the reeds will let you know that, and flags, that's another type of plant. He said, that's going to dry up. This is the prophecy. This is 3,000 years ago. The paper reed, another type of a plant, by the brook, by the mouth of the brooks, and everything sown by the brooks shall wither, be driven away, and be no. It will never see it again. He's going to get Egypt's attention, and I know how to get it. All I got to do is let stuff stop. Let things or stuff stop working. I went to a car dealership the other day. Every car in that place would be, I mean, pretty car, long car, big car, short car, expensive car, cheaper car, whatever. Almost every car that I saw in that car dealership, everywhere when I went about, went to more than one, more than two, more than three. 
and all of looking for used cars. I've never seen anything like it. Selling cars with 200,000 miles on them. Big in the bad. You buy the car today, somebody else want to buy the car you bought today, tomorrow. Oh, they, we, I just said, I've never seen anything like it. Yep. The fishers also shall mourn, the guys that make a living off of fishing. And all they that cast angles into the brook shall lament. He said, everybody working for the industry of food and dealing with water. He said, all right, he said, check this out. They're dealing with water. I don't have to, I don't have to stop the... He said, I could stop y'all and breathe. But I'm telling you what to eat. He said, I'm telling you what I do to you. If I stop the water flow, you're going to die. You're going to have a hard time. Check this out. They cast ang angle into the brook, shall lament, those that know how to deal with fishing. And they that spread nets upon the water shall languish. He said, you're going to get tired. I'm going to do the water. Egypt. I'm telling you what I'm going to do with it. This is the same place that told Pharaoh, you the boss. God said, no, you're not. And this is after Pharaoh let the people go. This is God said, I'm speaking in the future. Sound that long. But Egypt is not just the location of Egypt on the map. Egypt is anybody, this goes to anybody that's doing what Egypt did and they is doing. He said, more of these are not done. They that work in the fine flax. He said, I'm coming inside. I'm coming there where they, they got fine flax, fine material. They that weave networks shall be confounded. Weave networks. <laughs> Could that be Apple? I mean, he said networks. I know they're talking about weaving, but I'm just saying anything going on inside, he said, I am going to make sure that you understand. I told you I'm going to do it. It's on the label. She'll be confused. It ain't working. And they shall be broken in the purpose thereof. All that make sluices in ponds for fish. He said, you're going to be digging, digging, trying to get a conduit or some type of channel to get water. But he said, it ain't going to work. I'm trying to get your attention. God work, God is working as hard because he said, you don't want to go to hell. What I'm doing is a temporary uh, method to get you to change. Because if, if you go to hell, you better believe I did everything I could to keep you from it. Even if this hurts, I want your attention. I am not playing. He says, surely the princes of Zone, Zone is where Moses told Pharaoh to stop that foolishness, let them people go. So we go into that area. And you get in, in, the, in, the, in the king get the advice from the princes. But when you say, oh, that's a prince from Zone, that's supposed to be somebody who knows what they're talking about. Surely the princes of zones are fools. The counsel of the wise counsels of Pharaoh is become brutish. You're just like an animal. You have no sense. You don't even see that the people that's in leadership today, we, 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 our leaders don't have any sense. When did sex make you determine your vote? When is what kind of sex and who you have with determine whether or not you ought to be the president? When did killing babies be a, a, a part of what you believe in and that you're going to run the country off of something that's stupid? And you got people voting for you based on that. And we think that we're going to be absent. God's word is outdated, it's just not current. The same price for sin 3,000 years ago is still the same price in his death. God didn't change. He said, I don't have to. How say you unto Pharaoh, I am the son of the wise, the son of the ancient kings? He said, how are you going to tell the king that you're smart? And at the same time, you just commissioned 
that we don't have to obey the laws to little bit of children to say you can do anything you want in this life. What kind of sense does that make? If anything, we ought to be putting laws so the children can have hope. But we just said, no, nah, we don't need that. We, need to, we want it and we want it now. Consequences don't matter. I don't know why they put this on the back for the fat people. They say, you need to read it for you drink, brother. You wanted me. You put the calories in. You did how many calories you drink? They said, you want to watch your weight. Why don't you warn these kids? You can make this choice, but at least you ought to know that it's going to kill you. It's full of diseases. Tell them that every, every time they make a decision to make cartoon and paperback books and magazines attract our little girls and think it's okay to kiss another little girl and you don't put a warning on them, you don't care nothing about the kid. But you care something about the fat people. You said. Brutish. He says, how shall you say to Pharaoh, I am the son of the wise, the son of ancient kings? He said, by what? By what means? Because a wise person is prudent. And the prudent person says, if you do it today, the effect of this thing is going to ruin our generation so many years from now. Now, that's somebody who's thinking. We can't get it in the pulpit. We can't get it in the White House. We can't get it nowhere. It's still in the Word. The label is still here. Where are they? Where are the wise men? And let them tell you now. And let them know what the Lord of hosts has purpose upon Egypt. He said, where are the people that tell me what I'm getting ready to do? On the internet. On my, uh, we so People are so weak now until we're scared to tell them. I saw a girl yesterday or this morning. And she had her breast out. And they used to show the cleavage. Now, the cleavage is not enough. Now, it's showing the nipple and everything else, and it's, it's okay. I had a right girl. Let's tell you something. Happy birthday. Do you want a little girl to model out your behavior? And you're famous and pretty girl and funny. But you got all of your breasts out to the point that the part that they used to hide is out. But one thing I can say about a man. <laughs> Women, women, men, men go so far. They, men just, they just won't go that crazy. They might show you the print of what they say they might be endowed with. But they ain't crazy enough to put it all out there. We just loosely doing everything. Men, I don't see it on TV like I, I don't know. People just doing, maybe they doing, I just don't see it. I saw that. Every once in a while, a man will be naked on Facebook and, and say, I'm, it's my birthday. I just want you to see my birthday suit. So he show you enough to be interested. We're, not, we, we're losing it. We're losing it and we don't even realize we're acting crazy. So if somebody don't say it, then we're going to say, it's I. Right. It ain't I. Right. There are still standards that you got to have. And then you want a pretty wife. Go check her Facebook page out to see whether or not she is pretty as you think she is. Her mouth, her behavior, and how she exposes her body, it's an indicator of what you're getting. And you are not going to change it because you gave her your last name. And when you get what you pay for, you better study to see whether or not, whether or not what you get ready to invest in is worth your children being raised by. Young people, and then women my age, we want her husband too. Talk, let him talk. Just said, talk, keep on talking. Just listen. What'd you say? Just keep listening. You did. How many times you been married? Why you get so many divorces? Oh, you don't want me to know that. Why? Did you beat your wife? <laughs> you gotta ask all the questions. Then you probably won't lie anyway. <laughs> anyway, just tell you what. Go ask the wives that he had. Why you? Why? Go ask the wife. Why you? Why you divorced that man? 
You can go, you can get rid of the marrow. Well, that's a secret. The princes of Zone are become fools. He said, oh, the Zone was where the, the people advised, you know, back in the day, that's where they advised Pharaoh. And the princes of Noth, another place, are deceived. You got a lot of deceived people in leadership. And we refuse to go to this book that's telling us what's going to happen. And is happening and we don't know why. They have also seduced Egypt. They got the whole nation. Children, business owners, families, communities being seduced by those who don't know anything. And telling them it's all right to do that. No, it's not. I, you know, not mm -mm. Even they that are of the state of the tribes, there are the people that have positions to uh, 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 have the right to, to be over the government, the state, the protection. He said, even they ain't got no sense. The Lord has mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof. Do we have any perversion in the United States now? It's perverted when the church won't even teach the word. It's perverted when we don't even know the word said this. It is perverted that somebody will pull a scripture out of here and talk more about their change the scripture and then talk more about what they entertain themselves with and then you sit there and get happy while you're playing on your phone, texting and, and on social media trying to find your man and is he married? Look at it in his hand. Is she, what is she, is that real? Was that not real? Is that fake? Is that all of that? Well, that's what we do in the church. He said, I'm going to give you a perverse uh, administration or leader in the midst thereof. And they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof. Perverted. Anytime a pastor won't teach you the word of God, you are in a perverted ministry. I don't care how famous you are. If anybody tell you that healing is in Texas and you drive all the way to Texas and come back, and you didn't get healed. Perverted. Anybody tell you this is a prosperity ministry? Perverted. Anybody tell you it, the word of God doesn't just serve certain parts of God's word. God tells us everything. This chapter right here tells me everything. About myself like the woman in the well. You, we supposed to be walking out of there saying he talks about everything ever I need. If you're not getting ministered to and all the nutrients that you're supposed to be eating, you are not eating the meal that God cooked. Because when God cooks, he makes sure everybody can eat. He got the food that people that can't chew can eat some of that. You're going to get yours juiced. He got the babies that got good teeth. You can bite the apple. The young people, or whoever got good teeth that can bite the apple. He said, you're going to get your... He said, I feed everybody. Not, you don't have to, you can't afford to go to all these different churches and I got to go over here for healing. I'm going over here for prosperity. I'm going over here because me and my wife had a problem in our marriage. And we was in the word. We won't have all these issues and it won't cost so much. And the Lord has mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof. You don't know it's perverse because you're too lazy to read. Oh, Lord, Brendan, is you saying I'm too lazy? No, we too lazy, not you. And they have caused Egypt to an error in every work thereof. Everything that you do, God's got to, you just like Cain, trying to give me something that has been rejected. Not good enough to be given to nobody. Just rubbish. As a drunken man staggers in his vomit. He said, you, you, you doing things so crazy to me until you, you, you act like a drunk man that staggers in his own vomit. Anytime we cut the light off and tell God we don't need it, we might as well eat our own vomit. Neither shall there be any work for Egypt, which the head or the tail branch or rush may do. He said the whole city, from the head to the tail, the, the branch or rush, those that are in between, he said it won't be nothing for you to do. He said, you can't fight what I'm stopping. When I start you, what you going to do with it? He said, you can get together with a committee and come up with a plan. And if I'm the one that inst just instigated or put it, in, put it into motion, you just got to deal with it. I'm not going to let it go until I'm done. 
Why is God doing this? Because we have been like a hard-headed kid. And you don't want to kill him. Because you know if you kill him, he ain't going to never come back and never enjoy what you intended. So I'm going to pinch you and pinch you and get you to where you'll fall on your knees. Because I want to save you. I've been getting you in and out of jail and you still won't change. I whoop you and you still won't change. I'm going to take something you like. I'm only trying to get your attention. But that don't make no sense. Wait a minute. Yes, it does. Go to work and your boss knows that you got the potential to be a great worker. But you have coming in. He said, well, I'm going to cut your days. Now you got to come on in. And anyway, then you have do this. He said, now, I like your work and what you do, but you're not doing it like I know you. He said, I'm depending on it. And finally, he said, I'm trying my best to keep you. I'm going to dismiss you and put you on probation for like six months. And you think about it, if you want this job and you come back. And if you want, I want to hire you because I know what you got in me. That's why God has not killed us. That's why we're not consumed. He's because I know what's in you. But I will bring you some pain. You can't keep eating all over everything, bro. Your knees ain't going to be able to hurt. Then your knees ain't going to be able to work because they're going to be hurting. It don't mean I don't love you. You just got to stop doing it and thinking that I that pain doesn't... In, it, in other words, you got to stop saying disobedience is not equivalent to pain. You can't spend all your money and just keep spending and spending and spending and spending and spending and spending and, spending and, spending and think that you're going to be able to get what you want. He said, now it's got to hurt. Why? Because I'm trying to let you know there's discipline in everything. I done dried up the water. Your fish is dead. You're not making any money. You're killing each other. What's all like us? Do we, or we just want a little more pressure. We'll be like Pharaoh. God is saying, America? Don't do that. Then you say, we'll, 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 we'll change our mind tomorrow. America? Don't do that. Well, I'm, I, I said, I'm trying not to kill you now. Oh, don't let me come down like I come down on a swift cloud. We are already came. The, the garbage man already said we, we can't pick up. They used to pick up garbage can on a routine. God has allowed the routine to, they don't know what to do. They said we, we can't think of what to do. So the garbage has to sit here and sit here and sit here. After a while, it's going to stink. It won't change. That's happening right now. Then we got a country somewhere start in addition. You know, it's crazy. In the middle of a, 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 a something we do not understand, people having a hard time breathing. Hospitals don't, they just can't wait on you like they used to. And then somebody crazy enough to start a war. And you say, well, that's over there. I ain't never seen something that happened to somebody else that didn't affect me in some kind of way. We all are a part of the body. Russia is a part of the body. So when Russia is going through something, it's eventually going to... I burned myself right there the other day. I didn't even know I burned myself. That affected my... Look at this hand right here rubbing on that. It, even though this was not touched, this still says, I need to rub on this because she, she burned myself. But if you don't have wise counsel, then this stuff happens. And you say, I don't know what's happening with you. That's because we haven't read the book. And that day shall even be likened to women. He said, a man ain't going to shake like a woman. He's going to be running just like a woman. And it shall be afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which he shakes over it. He said, a man ain't going to shake and run and scare like a woman. Your gun ain't going to work. The ammunition going to be too expensive to buy. He said, you are going to shake. I'm doing this because I want you to change. I don't want to do it, but I will do it. And I did tell you it will happen because you won't listen. And the land of my people, Judah, shall be a terror unto Egypt. It used to be Egypt was a terror to Judah. Switch the tables of turn. Egypt said, Judah, 
Everyone that makes mention thereof shall be afraid of themselves. Ooh, Judah, Judah, Judah. You just say Judah, and they're going to get scared. We have God switching this thing. He's going to be afraid in himself because of the counsel of the Lord of hosts, which he has determined against it. Isaiah is of Judah. And when you see how far you have gone away from my word, then you're going to realize I ain't nobody to play with. You don't think that I'm behind the land not having a solution to uh, 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 what you're trying to have a cure for and you can't find it? Y'all got to do that. Me, what's up? I'll tell you what you need to get off the land and, and heal it. No, we three years. I've been online every day. And I got one person that comes to Bible class and we read every night. Some dropped off. Some I asked to leave. Uh, because they came, you know, to do something other than what I was assigned to do. I don't play. I didn't play in the classroom. I don't play with this word. Well, you think you know everything. No, I don't. I think I know that if you got to come here to do anything but learn, then I ain't going to let you in. <laughs> I don't know everything. I, read, I try to read with people every day to make sure I ain't, I ain't lying. And that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak language of Canaan. You see, you're going to find and start talking like the folk that I went and, and took, get off my land and I'm bringing some new people up in here. He it's going to be five cities in Egypt that's going to start speaking the language of, in, of Canaan and swear to the Lord of hosts, one shall be called the city of destruction. He said, one of them cities is going to be so bad they're going to fall on their knees and say, where is the word of God? He said, five cities are going to turn their face toward me. And one of them is one of the worst ones that's going to be on their knees. But they're going to call upon me. And guess what I'm going to do? Hello? <laughs> and that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst. These folks are going to get the altar ready. They're going to have the word of God. And that he said, I know how to get you. I know how to squeeze you till you say it. I give up, I give up. Why does God have to take us through that? In that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. He's not going to get you to come. He said, I know how to get people. And still let you live. I just got to hurt you. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. He said, now this is just a sign. I'm using Egypt. I'm trying to get everybody's attention. I have never read this book before in my life. And I've been in church mostly every day of my life. Ain't nobody took the time to read this book for me. And that's okay. They did. I'm reading it myself now. For they shall cry to the Lord because of the oppressors. For this on it. And he shall send them a savior. He said, keep my word. And a great one. And he shall deliver them. He said, I'm doing all this because I don't want you to go to hell. I'm a father. And the Lord shall be known to Egypt. He said, Egypt is going to get to know me. And the Egyptians shall know the Lord in that day and shall do sacrifice and oblation. Yes, they shall vow a vow unto the Lord and perform it. He said, going to finally start. What is they doing? What are they doing? They finally going to set up a bill in your house right and put the right material in it. I'm finally going to do something right. I'm finally going to go to school and do my homework and stop cheating. <laughs> I will do right what's right. And the Lord shall smite Egypt. He shall smite and heal it. He said, I'm going to smite you and then I'm going to heal you because I got to get you to say you want me. I already don't want you to go to hell. I got to whoop you. And they shall return to the Lord, and he shall be entreated of them. In other words, they're going to seek his word. And, shall, and he shall heal them. Now, this Egypt. Egypt is going to be this, 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 this play where they're going to turn to God. The word said they will. Now, all the rest of us, if we do as Egypt did, 
then we would have had an opportunity. He said, but Egypt, I'm calling out. I said, I'm going to do that in that land. And then the rest of the land is going to see how I keep my word toward Egypt. I advise you to notice what I said to one, I said to all. But know to keep your eyes on Egypt. I'm going to do this. Egypt going to repent. I already know Egypt going to repent because I looked at their birth rate last year and I looked at the United States and see how many babies were born. 13% of women had babies, girls, in um in the United States in 2020, 2021. Egypt having babies like God said it was supposed to have. I saw that it just popped up. I was like, Egypt and not killing them babies. They ain't killing them babies. And that day shall there be a highway out of Egypt. They used to have roadblocks. Now they're building highways to get to Assyria, a country that they hate, like black and white. Assyria didn't have nothing to do with Egypt, and Egypt didn't have nothing to do with Assyria. He said, but I'm going to build a highway. They're going to be, they're going to be bothering. They're going to be trading. They're going to get along. And the Assyrians shall come into Egypt, and the Egyptians shall go into Assyria. That, that's happening. That's going to happen. The two major enemies is going to start getting along. God said, I don't know why that, I mean, well, he knows why he had to hurt them, but we don't realize, we go, we, we, we don't, we don't get it until somebody has to snatch it from us or take it from us, and then we finally say, I give. And the Egyptians shall serve with the Assyrians. They're going to get along. When I get through with Egypt as an example to the world, Oh, my, what did I just do? Sorry. And that day shall Israel be the third with Egypt and, a, and with Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of the land. He said, did I'm a hook up. Israel going to come in there and get in with Egypt and Assyria. Y'all going to finally start getting along. Whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people. I got to use you, Egypt. And Assyria, the work of my hands. I got to use you, Assyria. Y'all some of the meanest people on earth. And Israel, mine inheritance. I'm going to show people that I'm going to work with you all. And I want the world to know that I had to do to you what I will do to them if they don't learn what I will do. Because what I do to you, I do to anybody. But so they have a particular place to watch Watch Israel, watch uh, Assyria, and watch Egypt. And then, watch yourself change. Lord, we thank you for your word. May we be a people of change. May we be, may we get exempt from all the things that could happen to us. And may your word be magnified in this land. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.